Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all very well. Everyone, switch on your camera. Means today's section is live. Yes, yep. on YouTube because oh. Kisha D is our resident IT expert. Oh. So, Leah, see, see your screen. Meeting is now streaming live on YouTube. Right, Durgeshwari or a YouTube yes, yes. star. Yes, yes. I have got a link. Pechan uh -huh. Durgeshwari yeah, yeah, has man. started live section. So excited. <laughs> Wow. And here we have all our great speakers. We have cameras on. This is amazing. Thank you. Superb, superb, superb. Hi, Pratiksha. We can also uh, post this live on uh, our Facebook page also. Yes, you can. Superb. Do it. Everybody's becoming an IT expert here, which I love. <laughs> love. The future is digital guys so the better yes. you handle it the better it is we have a new guest with tanno today lovely and who is this tanno's brother oh how sweet welcome <laughs> tanno's brother welcome to pechan thank you ma'am you're welcome who else is joined where's jai prakash i don't see him today so guys, in the future, we're going to keep to this one session from 11 to 12. Sometimes it may take a little bit longer. That's why we've made it only one session, right? Because then I don't have to hurry up and rush the information. Ankita, I love how you always come for the GK. Makes me feel so good. Thank you. Okay, so I don't think too many more people are joining. Our uh, Vrushali Vaishali uh, combo is not there today. Yeah. Okay. Shall we start? So today we've got two uh, videos for you. And uh, when we start, uh, we're going to start uh, with the countries where they are from. So don't say, oh, another country. Because the country part is just for 10 minutes. It's just to show you where the videos are from and then we're going to go into the fun part of today because a lot of it is just fun and uh, the videos are there there are wonderful concepts because you know every time we show you a new country we try to teach you one or two new concepts so kisha jisha if you all are ready to go i'm ready thank you So we start again with the boring world map because we always, we must know where we are in the world, right? That's super important. And today we're going to a different continent. We've been to North America. We've been to Europe many times. And today we're going to the continent of Africa. All right? It's a continent we often don't know much about. It's a very exciting place. So... Today, we're going to look at two countries in Africa, which are side by side, so we can do both together. So everybody can see Africa on the map, I hope. Okay, everybody can see Africa on the map. So can we please have, yes, a world tour sitting at home. Thank you, Aditya Bhale Rao. That's exactly what it is. Let's go to the next slide, please. Yes, so here's a map of Africa close up and you can see how many different countries there are in Africa. But I want to take your attention to the east. Yes, where Keisha or Jisha, I don't know who is so kindly showing us two countries, Kenya Jisha. and Jisha. Tanzania. Thank you, Jisha. Kenya and Tanzania. Do you all see them? Yes. Give me a thumbs up, Durgeshwari Ajmeri, on my screen, if you see them. Yes, thank you so much. So you see that Kenya and Tanzania, two countries in Africa, and you see that they both are coastal. Coastal. What is a coast? What is a coast? Coast. Near to sea. Near to the sea. Thank you. That's exactly what it is. So you see that both Kenya and Tanzania are near to the sea. They have a lot, a lot. The east, uh, the east border of Kenya and Tanzania is absolutely at the sea. And the ocean there is called the Indian Ocean, right? Which 
if you look out from Bombay Gate to A, that is Indian Ocean. Same thing, right? Which also extends up to the east coast of Africa. So next slide, please. So here we have the two countries, Kenya and, and Tanzania, and we have the two flags. You don't have to just remember what they look like so that you can identify them if you have to ever, right? And on the Kenyan flag in the middle is something actually quite interesting, but we're not going to talk about it this Wednesday. We're going to talk about it next Wednesday. So I'm going to show you that picture again next Wednesday. Any idea what it looks like in the middle? Anyone can guess? What is it? Border type. Border, but weapons. Border. Yes, Aditya, weapon. Shield, shield. Shield, excellent. Very good. It is a shield, but it looks like an old fashioned, right? Any case, we don't use shields today. So, shield and weapons, as Aditya said, arrows, right? Or spears. So, sword, this, sword. Yeah. They are spears, actually, and next time we are going to talk about this. So remember this Kenyan flag and the Tanzanian flag on the other side. And the capital of, T of Kenya is a place called Nairobi. It's a big city. It's called Nairobi. Nairobi. And the capital of Tanzania is so funny because we've got two names there, Dodo Moa and Dar es Salaam. So there's a little story about this. Dar es Salaam was actually the old capital of Tanzania. But then one fine day they decided that they're going to change the capital. Okay, I have no idea why. So they decided to have it in Dodomwa. Now what happened is they changed all the government offices to Dodomwa, but they couldn't change the parliament. So it's very funny that the parliament, like our parliament, you know now the word parliament, so I'm not going to explain yes, yes. it. The parliament is in Dar es Salaam, but the government offices are in Dodoma. Okay, so this is a strange part about Tanzania, that it has two capitals. Next slide, please. Great. So what languages do they speak? They have many, many languages, but their main Local language is a language called Swahili. Swahili. Their main language is Swahili, but they also speak a lot of English. Now, this reminds us about India, right? We have a lot of languages, but our national language is Hindi, but we still speak a lot of English. Is this not right? Is this not yes, right? Right. Good. So, yes. somebody tell me. Why in India do we speak a lot of English? Tell me. Because English is an international language. Great, Turgeshwari, because English is an international language. But how did we learn English? How did Indians learn English? Because uh, England has... Yes. England has ruled over India. Excellent. Because England has ruled over India. I guess that's Ayush who spoke, right? From the voice. Thank you, Ayush. Yes. So because India, England has ruled over India for many, many years. And at that time, Indians started learning English because we had to talk to them, right? They had to talk to us. So they wanted us to learn English. In the same way, both Kenya and Tanzania were also British colonies. They were also British colonies. Remember I told you England had lots and lots and lots of colonies throughout the world, right? So Kenya and Tanzania were also British colonies. And now you know what is the meaning of the word colony. So can somebody very quickly tell me what is a colony? What do we mean when India was a colony of the British? What do we mean? Uh, Samaj, society. No, think India was a colony of the British. What do I mean when I say that? Uh, ruling. Ruling. 
Yes, ruling. Simple, simple. And see, you know so many English words now. You can definitely answer me in English. A country or an area is ruled by another country, right? Yes, Saurabh, it's to rule. So you know that the British were ruling India. A whole area around India, they were also ruling Kenya and Tanzania. So now you know two more colonies of the British. Very good. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Great. And here we are, the money of both the countries, which you know is called the currency, right? That's also a new word. And now when you look at the Kenyan notes, they are called shillings. And the Tanzanian notes are also called shillings. Kenyan shilling and Tanzanian shilling. We have the Indian rupaya. We have the US. What do we have in the USA? Dollar. Everybody dollar. knows that. Yeah, US dollar. And we have the Kenyan shilling and we have the Tanzanian shilling. And look at Kenya. Look at, the Kenyan, look at the Kenyan shilling. The note right on top has a picture of this man. And he must be a very important man, right? Because Indian notes have a picture of Mahatma Gandhi and he's really important to us. So Kenyan shilling has a picture of this man whose name is Jomo Kenyatta. He was a freedom fighter for Kenya, a freedom fighter. Okay, so obviously it's very important to Kenya. He was a freedom fighter and then he became, after independence, he became the president of, thank you, Sanya. Well done. Also the first president. Good job. Yes. Also the first president of Kenya. Okay. And his name is easy to remember because it sounds like Kenya. Kenya Ta. K E N Y A T T A. K E N Y A T T A. Wow, I've already got 32 things. Jomo Kenyatta. Yes. So please look on the Tanzanian side. And don't look. Uh, look at the, leave the first one and go down. Look at the other notes. And what do we see? What do we see on the notes? Elephants. Animals. Yes. Yeah. Super. We see animals. Now, you remember in the Japanese notes, when we spoke about the Japanese yen, we saw things which were important to the Japanese people were shown on their notes, correct? Yeah, yes, remember that? Yes. Good. So here, we, like we saw Mount Fujiyama, remember that? On the Japanese note. So here, in Tanzania, we obviously see things which are important to the Tanzanian people. And what is important to Tanzania? Animals. Animals. Excellent. Guys, if you're not speaking, please stay muted, okay? Because I can hear the background noise. Animals, these wild animals. Next slide, please. These wild animals are important to Tanzania. And in a short while, you will know why. Okay, so what do Kenyan and Tanzanian people do to earn their money? Their means of livelihood, their economy. What does their economy depend on? So can somebody tell me from these slides, what do they do? Uh, do Kenya. They do? Kenya do agriculture and yes. Tanzania so, so, fishing. So, so this is for both the countries, okay? For both the countries, you're right in what you said. Kenya Hello. and Tanzania, they do agriculture and they yes. do fishing. A lot of agriculture. Agriculture means farming. You know that, correct? And they do a lot of fishing because we saw they were near the coastline, right? They're near the sea. So they can catch a lot of fish. Next slide, please. Okay, they also do something called mining because both the countries are rich in natural resources. Natural, natural meaning, you know, resource, things that nature gives you. Both countries have a lot of natural resources. And here there are pictures of four things which we find 
in Kenya and Tanzania. Would anyone like to read the four things? Yes, ma'am. In Kenya, there are gold in and both. diamond. In both. Beta in both. In both. Now it's for both the countries. Yeah. Gold, diamond, coal, and gem. Yes. Coal, diamond. Well done. Thank you yeah. for reading that. And the process of taking these things out of the ground is called mining. Look at the word on top. Mining. We are Mama. mining. Please unmute. Somebody needs to unmute. To, to mute, please. Somebody needs Mama, to mute. Question please. one. Yes. Can we go back what to the means? mining slide, please, Tisha? Thank you. Yes, please ask your question. Ma'am, coal and gems means... Okay, very good. Thank you for asking. When you don't know the meaning, you Thank must you. stop me and ask the meaning. What is coal? What is coal? You can say the meaning in Hindi if you wish. Ma'am, can I say? Yes, everybody can speak. Please speak. Coal, me. coal means kohila. Thank you. Did the person understand? What are gems? What are gems? Can I, Yes. Ruby. One second, ma'am, please. Jorgeshwar, you understood coal is koila, black color, what we use for chula, for, yeah, that is coal. Third, please continue. What is What are gems, please? Uh, Somebody uh, like to Ruby, Ruby. Yes, here you see rubies, emeralds, all kinds of stones, precious stones. Precious, precious stones, right. So in Tanzania, we have a very fancy precious stone called Tanzanite also. It only comes from Tanzania. It's blue color. So all gems. So mining is a process of taking these precious things out from the ground. Got it, Durgeshwari? Good. She's got it. I can see in her face. So to remove all these things and see, see what a big process it is. You have to go right inside, right? It's a lot of hard work. And this is called mining. So now we have a new name, new word also in English today. Next one, please. So what are the important things? Agriculture, fishing and mining. So three important things for Kenya and Tanzania. And the fourth important thing by which people earn their money, earn their living is tourism. Now tourism, what is tourism? Tourism. Anyone wants to tell me what is tourism? In your own words. Tra traveling. traveling, very good. So People, we will say travel for business and for leisure. What is leisure? What is leisure? Holidays? Luxury yes, to relax, Durgeshwari. Entertainment. For entertainment, for relaxation. You go to the beach and lie down and relax. That is leisure, okay? So when you travel, you may travel for business. You may travel for leisure. So when you go on a holiday, are you traveling for business or for leisure? Leisure. For leisure, that's right, okay. Now, so tourism is a business. It's a business of attracting people to your country, attracting. Telling them, come to our country. Showing them beautiful pictures of our country. Showing them pictures of the Taj Mahal. Showing them pictures of the Qutub Minar. What a fabulous place India is. We have such great historical sites. We have beautiful beaches in Goa. We are attracting tourists. Accommodating. Accommodating means, if they come, where will they stay? Where will they stay? We have to build hotels. We have to build motels, we have to build lodges for people of all rich people, middle class people, all types of hotels we have to build, accommodating, transporting, we need planes to bring them here, we need trains and buses to take them inside India where they want to go, entertaining, if they come here, whole day they're not going to keep watching 
Tajmal and uh, the Qutub Minar, then they will want to enjoy themselves, right? So we need to entertain them. So the business of attracting, accommodating, transporting, entertaining tourists to any place is called tourism. Now, you know, we may not... Guidance also, ma'am. Yes, guidance. We need to have proper guides. We need to have guides who speak foreign languages. Imagine if yes. people come and they don't understand English. What are we going to do? So we need people who can speak French, people who can speak German, people who can speak Spanish, right? So this is a huge business because thousands and thousands of people visit countries. So we have to take care of them. Now, this for Tanzania and Kenya is a big source of income and lots and lots of their people work in the tourism industry. And now, as we continue with this, you will find out why. What is so special about Kenya and Tanzania that people like to come here? Next one, please. Cameraman, yes. So here we have a beautiful picture of what's so exciting about Kenya and Tanzania. You know, a huge part of Kenya and Tanzania, not on the coast, but further inland, is a grass land. Look at this picture carefully. You see all this grass, right? But do you see lots of trees or very few trees? Very, very few trees. Very few trees, yes. And these trees look like different trees from the trees that we see all the time. They have very small leaves and they have umbrella shaped trees. Isn't it a bit like an umbrella? Yeah, it's not long and tall. It's like an umbrella and very few trees and lots of grass, lots of different varieties of grass. And here you see the wild animals walking in this area. This is very important and you're going to know why. Please next this time. Is like safari park. Are also Good fun. job. So this grass land, as we call it, grass land, as we call it, has its own ecosystem within it. Ecosystem within it. Now, what is an ecosystem? Means all the plants, insects, animals, people, everything within this system lives in cooperation with each other. A biological community, biological, from biology, all the things you learned in biology. What all did you learn in biology? All about living things. You learned about plants, you learned about insects, you learned about animals, you learned about birds, you learned about snakes, you learned about crocodiles. Am I not right? You learned about human beings. All, Durgeshwari, don't worry if you don't get every word, we will send you the PPT. Biological could be on YouTube. Yeah, of interacting. What do you mean interacting? Everything is interacting with each other, right? With each other. The, the animals are interacting with the plants, They're eating them, right? The plants are interacting with the soil. We are interacting with the animals. We are all linked together in an ecosystem. So biological community on interacting each with their physical environment. What is physical environment? The soil, the mountain, the flat land. Here in the grasslands, we have flat land. Did you see any mountains in the picture? No, no mountains. Flat land. Flat land. That is the physical environment of the grasslands all over the world. Next one, please. So here I think now we have the video. Am I? Oh, here we go. Okay. And these, oh, we should have had the video actually right. about yeah. environment. Um, yeah. So, yes. Telling so I can thank you. We can wait a minute while I talk. Yeah. So this video is a really, really interesting video. And I think it is teaching you better than I can teach you, which is why 
I want this video to come on. It tells you about the ecosystem. What is an ecosystem? Try and listen, please. Sometimes the audio is not too good, but please read the subtitles. Should I begin? Please. The savanna is a biome with large patches of grassland and trees and occasional shrubs. It is a mix between a tropical forest and a desert. It doesn't receive quite enough rain to support a forest. It is located in Africa, Brazil, Australia, and India. Savannas have a warm to hot climate and can receive up to 20 to 50 inches of rainfall a year. However, the rainfall is concentrated in six to eight months. Then you have a period of drought when fires may occur. These fires kill off enough trees to prevent a savanna from becoming a tropical forest. There are many types of grasses found in a savanna and also the occasion, occasional tree like an acacia or a biobab. These are found in Africa and India and can grow up to 80 feet tall. The savanna is also home to some of the largest land dwelling animals. Let's take a look at these animals. Savannas contain elephants, rhinos, zebras, lions, and hyenas. Savannas are similar to grasslands, but they have more rain, trees, and a longer period of drought each year. So there you have the savanna, a biome that receives a fair amount of rain, but it's not a forest and it's not a desert. It's grassland. Thanks for watching. Moo -moo. Superb. Thank you, Keisha. Excellent audio. Thank Great. you. So, I Keisha, just we'll just uh, two. Yes. Setting, um, I just wanted to note them because when yes. in the pronunciation, the the kind of um, subtitles that come that are wrong. So it's the spelling of an, of this tree is this, see? Yes, acacia. The spelling was wrong there. Yes, and acacia. this is, yeah, I'm just checking this wonderful. These are the two types of yeah. trees, the correct yeah. spelling. I've got it, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, so guys, I want you to tell me what all you saw in that video, quickly. Just what you saw, quickly. Animals. And in the savanna, there are five types of animals. There are different types of animals. And how long this drought? Yes, please. Anything more? Okay. So a couple of things I want to draw your attention. Tropical forest are also Tropical there. Tropical forest. Thank you, Ayush. Do you know the meaning of tropical? Okay, I want a frank answer from y'all. Do y'all know about equator, 
Tropic of Capricorn and Tropic of Cancer. Yes or no? Quick answer. Yes. No? Some saying yes, some saying no. No, ma'am. Good. Thank you. So next time we're going to include that in what we're talking about. Okay? Good. So, tropical grassland, the climate, rain only in the rainy season, not much rain the rest of the year, so it becomes very dry. Okay? Vegetation. Grass of many types, mostly short grass, very few trees because there's less water, right? And those who are interested in biology and have studied botany, you know that when it is dry, you never have big leaves because big leaves, lots of water vapor, goes away during photosynthesis. Yes, Ayush is not nodding. So the leaves have become small. Ma you're on mute. You're on mute. I think you went on mute. Since when was I on mute, guys? When you said after the big leaf. And yes, the big leaves have become small leaves. So less water vapor leaves the leaves. So the leaves can keep the water inside because they need the water for photosynthesis, correct? Biology. I'm remembering it's in school and I'm 58 years old. So you definitely remember it. You just did it a few months ago. Yeah. So sometimes there are few leaves, but otherwise there are thorns. Thorns, the branches. Have, what is a thorn? You can tell me in Hindi. Yes, yeah, hurt you, right? Like on roses, you have thorns. Well done. Okay, the, the trees are also umbrella shaped and there are very few trees. So the sunlight hits the ground and may, it is not shady. When we have many trees, it is shady, but here there are no many trees. The sunlight hits the ground and leaves the ground very, very hot. Tisha, I'm ready for the PPT. Right? So, so Durgeshwari has about, said that grasses are yellow and natural grasses are green. Why? Thank you. When they grow, they are green, Durgeshwari. But because of the heat, the green grass becomes yellow. Right? The water gets evaporated and the grass gets dried out. Thank you, Durgeshwari, for bringing that up. And the green grass becomes yellow grass because it is dry. Okay, got that? Do you more sunlight? There is a lot of sunlight. Okay, now look here. These are, okay, sorry, one last thing. This grassland in Africa is called the savanna, which is why they kept on saying savanna, savanna. The grasslands in Africa are called the savannas. There are grasslands on other continents they have different names. So when we say savanna, we know we're talking about which place? Africa. 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 Well done. Lovely. So here's a lovely, lovely slide of the five big animals in the savanna. I'm going to keep saying savanna so you get used to the word. And this is called the big five. And you know them all, right? Look at them. Massive, huge, and now you can imagine why people go to Africa. One of the reasons, because people in Europe, you know, have never seen these animals. They don't, they are not there in their countries. Okay. And why have we written African lion and African elephant? Because these are not like our Indian lion and Indian elephant. Yeah. They're a little different. Little different. Yes, Sujit. If uh, the lion from India, it is called Asiatic lion. That's well done. Lion from India has become called an Asiatic lion. Yes. Everybody has become a big friend of Google Uncle. Huh? Good. The more you read from Google Uncle, the smarter you'll be because you get more and more information. Good. Uh, we so, learn science only. Well That's done. It. Well yes. done. That means you studied very well. I'm so happy. So here we have African lion, leopard, African elephant, the rhino. Okay. We have rhinos in India too, in Assam, and the buffalo. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. So these are the big five. Next slide, please. But apart from the big five, we also have many other animals. Now we have the giraffe, only in Kenya. 
No giraffes in Tanzania, giraffes in Kenya. Okay, lovely animal, completely different. Such a gentle animal, only its leaves. Next slide, please. Here we have more animals. Zebra, everybody knows zebra? Everybody knows the gazelle, it's like a deer. Make different types of deer have different names. So this is a gazelle. You have monkeys, which everybody knows. You have one animal, which is a new one, wildy beast. Yes. Yeah, you get it typically in Africa, wildy beast. Next slide, please, because we're going to see a lot of wildy beasts now. So now something really interesting, which happens in Africa, in Kenya and Tanzania, which doesn't happen in many parts of the world, very few parts of the world this happens. It is called animal migration. Now the word migration, you all know this word because when your didis and bhaiyas have taught you that chapter, they have call taught you that soil. chapter. Yes, tell me. The call of soil. Are, well done, Ayush, the call of the soil. Who was migrating in Call of the Soil? That the writer. Well done. Migrating means moving from one place to another place. Correct? So human beings also migrate. Animals also migrate. Okay. So human beings, that's in the Call of the Soil. Mr. Iyer moved from the city Mumbai to Peth village. Correct? To Thank grow you. organic food. Now, animals also move to one from one place to the other. Why do they move? They move in search of food and water. They move in to escape, to run away from the heat if it becomes too hot and they can't live. And it becomes too cold and they can't live. But animal migration is seasonal. What do we mean by seasonal? Yearly. Depends on the... Yes, it's yearly. Depends on the... Climate. Yes. So it depends on the climate. It depends on the seasons. Right? Cold season, hot season, monsoon season, rainy season. Depends. Now you think, if it becomes so hot, in the grasslands, in the savanna, and there's no water, the animals have to migrate. They have to move. And they are so smart that they move from the hot, dry places to the places where there is water. Because if there is water, then there will be food. Right, Durgeshwari, there will be the green grass where the water is. And the animals want to eat the green grass and they want to drink water. Otherwise, they're going to die. Right? So, they start moving. And this is the most fantastic, phenomenal thing that happens in nature. So, next slide, please. Or is it the video? I'm not sure. Here we go. Here we can see Wildebeest, you can see the zebras on the right side. Hundreds, thousands of animals moving from the hot, dry area to the wet area. You can see they're moving into the river. They are moving. They have to cross a huge river in Kenya huge river and they do that also they walk through water they walk through the land they run huge amounts of them run and i have some numbers here every year every year one million one million that is one with six zeros johan my son taught you all million and billion one with six zeros while the beast move from Tanzania to Kenya. Move from Tanzania to Kenya, from the south to the north. Wild beast, one million. Half a million gazelle. Yes, yes. 10 lakhs, no? Yes, 10 lakhs. 
half a million gazelle and 200,000 zebra, 2 lakh zebra, 2 lakh zebra, 5 lakh gazelle, move. Can we have the map back, please? The same one we were at. Or oh, oh, we are getting ready for the video, are we? They move from, they move from the south to the north because it's very hot. Look at the arrows here, guys. Look at the arrows. And look at the months, March, April, May, June. Look at how they're moving. Moving to the water. Moving where there is water. Moving up and then slowly coming back down when the water is there again in Tanzania. So all the time they are moving. Thousands, lakhs of animals running. Now imagine if you could see that. Imagine how exciting it would be, right? to actually be able to go to Kenya and Tanzania at the time of the migration and see this. This is why lakhs of tourists go to Kenya and Tanzania at the time of the migration to see these lakhs of animals crossing over. It is the most beautiful, fantastic sight and it's all natural. How do the animals know? They just know. They know when to go and they know when to return. It is the most fantastic thing. And we think animals don't know anything and we know everything, right? But animals also have a lot of sense in their own way. And they know things which we don't know. We don't know whether it's going to rain or not. We are just waiting and hoping. But they somehow know. Right? So this is a fabulous map. It shows, look at the arrows and it shows you how animals are moving from south to north. And then when it starts raining again, returning south again. Thank you. So I think now Keisha is going to play us a fabulous okay. video. Um, again, look at it carefully. I have a question. If a gazelle is a type of black buck. A black buck is also, I think, a type of a deer. So they are all in the same kind of family, all right? Gazelles, black bucks, deer, and many other names. They all have small differences between each other. Differences in their horns, differences in their color, differences in their fur. And where so they, they have from. different names. Yes, where they come from. Yeah. Yeah. So they have different names. So we are going to watch a video made by the National Geographic, which is one of the best companies in the world for the study of nature. Please watch. Each year, the Serengeti Plains in Tanzania play host to one of the greatest animal migrations on Earth. Some two million animals begin a round trip that will take them almost 2,000 miles. Fossil evidence suggests that modern wildebeest grazed these plains more than a million years ago. At the beginning of each year, the wildebeest congregate on the fringes of the Serengeti, all giving birth in the same month. Rapidly, their numbers swell. The calves can run as fast as their mothers within two days of being born. No one knows what triggers the migration. There is no discernible signal. It just takes one or two to sniff the air and decide the time is right to leave. The migrating animal's journey is a long and arduous one. Even without the attention of predators, around 200,000 of the weakest wildebeest and zebras will die from starvation, disease, or overexertion during the trek. Every day, fresh carcasses are left behind. The migrating animals rest at the swollen streams and regroup.
a single cat finds it tricky to bring down a full-grown wildebeest. But if it can separate a wildebeest calf off from its mother, then it has a chance of a meal. In Kenya's Masai Mara, the migrating herds arrive. Rains have created a huge area of well-watered grazing. Here, the wildebeest will stay until the smell of November's short rains tell them it's time to regroup and head southwards, back towards the Serengeti. Great. So, didn't that explain it beautifully? And it just showed, am I muted? I'm good. <laughs> so I love that video because I thought it really showed us how many of these animals are there, right? We've never seen so many animals in our life. And the way they move, the speed at which they move. And some interesting points from the video. See how they all had their children, all their little babies, calves, right? They said all the babies were born in the same month, the month before they're going to start moving. And within two days, the babies can run as fast as the mothers and fathers. Imagine how long it takes our babies to run and how quickly the animal babies run. Right, within two days, they are ready to start running with the parents. And then the whole numbers of them, one or two never go. You know, all this cattle, even goats, sheep, they never are alone, correct or not? They are always in a herd, in a herd, H-E-R-D. These are herd animals. They always go together. They never go alone. So when the herd starts moving, they all start moving with their children, right? Who are just born. Now they said many die along the way because obviously some may be too old to run such a long distance and they would be exhausted. That's what it said. They die of exhaustion extreme tiredness, too tired to continue and they die. Sometimes they get disease. Dehydration. Yes. And sometimes they die of starvation, not enough food in the dry areas and they have not reached the areas where the food is. So many of them die along the way. They travel 200 miles. So that's over 400 kilometers. Over 400, they run. Okay. And look at them. They're not walking slowly. They're really moving fast. Imagine leaving one whole country, moving into another country, going through rivers, going through lakes. What a fantastic sight it must be. So, these are the points I wanted to tell you about them. And I wanted to bring up one other new word which I've typed in the chat box, Serengeti. So these savanna grasslands in Kenya and Tanzania are also given this name, Serengeti. So when you see this name, don't be confused. It means the same thing. Okay, any area which is a plain, no mountains, with grass is called a grassland. The grasslands in Africa are called savanna. There are grasslands even in South America and they have another name, but these are called savanna. And this typical savanna in Kenya and Nigeria where we see the animals, is called the Serengeti. 
Serengeti. Serengeti. Any plain with no mountains, Keisha, and has the grass growing on it, okay? It shouldn't be a desert. It should have the grass. It shouldn't have a lot of trees. It should be exactly what we saw in the picture. It's called a grass. Okay, so just imagine 200 miles or over 400 kilometers these animals have traveled, right? Who thought that's exciting and different and something interesting which you've never known before, right? Yes or no? Or you didn't like it? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> Ajmer is smiling, so I'll take that as a yes. Thank you. Ayush is smiling, so I'll take that as a yes. Great. I think Sanchit has a question. He has raised his hand. Thank you, Sanchit. I can't see you on my screen, but Aditya has said yes. Thank you for that, Aditya, because we try to find topics which may keep you interested. As I always say, anything you want to know about, put it on the group so we can research that. Ma'am. Yes, please. Yeah, Masai Mara means very good and we are going to do it next time thank you for asking me these questions Masai Mara means what the other things on the land means what Sereng look in the middle of the map Serengeti National Park means what look at this word reserve Gurumeti game reserve means what all this is going to happen next time okay all this is going to, so let's, let's put this map up next time and solve all the words which are here. Well, not Lolindo, because I don't know what that is, but whichever words I can do. Masai Mara, what is a game reserve? This is going to be for next time. Okay, quick. So apart from, Disha can take the next slide of the flamingos. Apart from these animals, some birds also migrate in Africa. Anyone knows these birds? Yes, this is flamingo. flamingos. Flamingos. Because so typically, look at their feathers. Pink and red color feathers. How exciting is this? Pink and red birds? And you know the fun thing, which I also didn't know till yesterday when I started my research, is when they are born, they are not pink and red. They are just white or gray. Mostly yeah. white. And they become pink and red because of the food that they eat. So imagine if we ate carrots, we might become orange. <laughs> I don't know. But these flamingos, look how they are water birds. They want water. And in the water, they find some small, small, small microorganisms, even smaller than insects, very small, called algae. A-L-G-A-E. You must have heard of it in biology. A-L-G-A-E. And they love to eat this algae. So they always go to the water which has this algae. And again, we don't know how they know, but they know that this water has the algae. And they come here and eat this. And this algae gives the pink and red color to their feathers. So they are white, but because they love to eat algae and they eat so much algae. So look at the picture on the right, where you can see that these flamingos again travel, they migrate. They come from other places to Africa, to Kenya and Tanzania, to these big lakes where there is a lot of algae to eat. They come to these lakes and they stay there for some months, eating and eating and eating. And then they fly back. We don't know why they come. And we don't know why they return. But they do this every year. And somebody's written very kindly. It's the national bird of Kenya, the flamingo. Okay, because it's a beautiful bird to see. Thousands and thousands, maybe lakhs of flamingos come every year. And here we have our next video, which is according to me the best video. Just look at it because it shows you how fantastic it looks. 
those thousands and thousands of birds come all the way just to stay and eat for a few months and then to return to their home seasonal migration i think uh, someone has written bahamas it's the yes. national bird. flamingos are also known as a, a lot in the bahamas yeah so they're the national bird of bahamas kenyan is a very different kind of bird called lilac breasted roller it's got six mm. seven colors in it i see so, that's i think it's a different type so flamingos are of many types and the colors of the of the feathers may be slightly different depending on what they're eating right where they are so this is a fascinating thing that the color comes from the food ma'am i have one question may i ask you of course always ask मैम मैं हिंदी में बोल सकती हूँ yes. मुझे पूछना था मैम कि जो इधर उधर अफ्रीका में बहुत सारे एनिमल्स होते हैं वो मतलब मतलब जो ह्यूमन बीइंग्स होते हैं उनको मतलब डिफिकल्टीज नहीं देते हैं क्या वेरी गुड सो दैट्स अ गुड पॉइंट दुर्गेश्वरी व्हिच वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर Okay, right nice. and then the next time yes thank you for bringing that up because that comes with the topic of the game reserve what is a game reserve what is protection of animals what are endangered species thank you so much you just gave me the idea for the rest of when is next when <laughs> thank you guys for your questions see when you keep asking me it makes my brain also work now my brain is getting a bit old so you have to help me here okay okay watch is even more volcanically active its shores are fringed by steam vents and gushing geysers as with lake natron volcanic minerals enrich bogoria's waters providing an ideal environment for even larger flocks of flamingos At the height of the season there may be over a million birds Flamingos are famous for their extraordinary courtship rituals. Flamingo migration is one of the great rift's most enduring mysteries. they appear and disappear unpredictably in response to fluctuating water levels great thank you keesha So here we are, and just imagine that all the pink and the red which you saw in the water—that's all the birds. There must be millions of them. And we're going to close now. But before I close, I want to tell you that in Mumbai also, every year flamingos come. 
they travel all the way from Russia. They come here in December, January, February, when it's very cold in Russia. They fly thousands of kilometers and come outside Mumbai. I don't know if you all have seen them, but every year in the newspapers, their picture is printed when they come. So this is also a very exciting fact that they even come to Mumbai and we are living in Mumbai and we don't know and we don't even go to see them. <laughs> so maybe one day we can try to arrange something like this. So great guys, thank you so much for attending today. I hope you enjoyed this session. Because I, I have a question. Please. Uh, Non-vegetarian animals, can uh, they migrate? Uh, Non-vegetarian animals, no, because in the big five which we saw, the lion and the leopard, they do not migrate. Okay, they do not migrate. Um, uh, but the, it's only that wild beast and zebra and gazelles who migrate. Because first of all, these guys can't run also. I don't think they can run so many thousands of kilometers. At they don't have the kind of stamina that yes. the... So the uh, vegetarian animals are called herbivores. I'll type it also. And the ones that eat non-veg or other animals are called carnivores. And there are some that eat both called omnivores. They eat leaves and plants and then they eat animals also. So usually like a zebra or a wildebeest, they can they have the stamina to go for these long distances at one time. But But we all know that a cheetah and a leopard, they're very fast animals, but they can't do it for such a long period of time. Only when they are hunting. Yeah. And most cats, means all of these are types of cats, you know, like wild cats, where is, there is leopard, cheetah, panther, tiger, all of them usually stay alone. They don't stay in groups or herds. Only the lion, the lion is the only wild cat that stays in a pack, which is actually called a pride, a pride of lions. How there's a herd of other animals, it's a pride. So only lions live together in like this big family. All other cats, they live alone. Only one of them. They don't, one or two max, they don't live together. So they don't usually travel for very long distances. These, because there's this big group of people, so imagine if there's a group of people will travel more, no? But to go alone is so much more stressful. It's almost like that. So when animals are in groups, they travel usually. So I'll just post the, the spellings of herbivore, which only eats plants, carnivore, which eats other animals, and omnivore. Like we are omnivores because we eat plants also. We eat chicken and fish and mutton and everything else also. So that's basically what. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, I have a question. Like, if the if the animal is migrating, so is there is any chance then how the lion and the other animal who live on eating animals how they survive? Yeah, I was waiting for someone to ask me that difficult question, and it had to be Achilles. <laughs> call my bluff. Okay. Well, I guess there must be some animals left behind. I frankly don't have an answer to your question. Well, I just presume that maybe, hello, there's one other idea. Perhaps those animals who don't migrate, after all, everybody doesn't migrate, right? Only the zebra, the wildebeest, and the gazelles. Those who can run very fast, only they migrate. So I presume there are enough other small animals left for these people for these animals, the big animals who are left, predators, to eat. Also, when they're traveling through, we saw that the herd was traveling through and that leopard was running after to try and catch one of the babies. Also, perhaps the older animals who can't travel and who get left off during the way, they would also become prey to the big animals, definitely. Because yeah. they wouldn't even be able to run fast anymore. So the little babies and the older animals would definitely be prey, remain prey to the big uh, lion and uh, yeah. uh, leopard and others who are left behind. There are, are lots left. of other animals that don't travel like this. Yes. They can manage with less water, less food. 
so they mm. survive if you know you know how there are some you, you must have done this in school you know there are some animals they only eat fresh like if they kill something they'll eat it immediately right so cats are like that all these big leopard cheetah lion they will not eat things that are already dead or things that are decaying so their body is used to eating less because they will only eat when they hunt so they hunt in a, like four or five days they hunt once so they find small animals that are there yes yes they call prey when you hunt a, a smaller animal it's called their prey omophone right. not prey p r a y yes p r e y p r e y let's make a note of that for our english class <laughs> जब वो खाते हैं no it's it's naturally they're born with red or different colored eyes and then as they grow older it becomes darker red like some fl- flamingos have black eyes they all of them don't have red eyes that thank you didi most welcome so i think you'll enjoy it because you'll have a lot of questions and there are that. omnivores yeah. and animals are always exciting aren't they and there are this nice good difference from doing all the problems of all the people in the different country <laughs> um someone so, had a question if bears are omnivores you're right bears are there are some bears who eat plants as well as other animals so bears are also some bears are omnivores not all so okay so thank you so much now we will always have a gk class at 11 o'clock right and we will try and end between 12 and 12 15 and next wednesday we're going to stay in tanzania and kenya we're going to explain to you more about the serengeti we're going to explain to you what is masai mara what is the norongoro crater we're going to explain to you about the native people who actually lived in these areas because they are called the masai and that's why masai mara very interesting because they are completely different from you and me so looking forward to seeing you on wednesday again this friday fun friday we have a very very famous doctor who's coming to talk to he's a heart doctor and he's coming to talk to us about the heart its functions and how we even not we but you as young people also need to be careful about your heart health because what you do today is going to make you a healthy or unhealthy older person tomorrow right so this is something that's very interesting for young people too no need you may think that oh i'm only uh, 17 i'm not going to get a heart attack till 70 so why should i bother today but what you do today will keep your heart healthy as you grow all right so great having you all thank you so much for being here tomorrow is your mentor session friday is fun friday and i will see you back next wednesday thank you and thank you, thank you ma'am google doc See you. Yes, yes, we will send you the Google form. We will send you the PPT. We will send you the videos if you're interested. Yes, okay? yes, of course. Enjoy, you, enjoy, enjoy. Thank you. Yes, bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Have a nice day.